Hello, hello, and welcome back to Funnelheads. My name is Andrew, and today we're going to be doing a full ship tour of the Carnival Elation, which debuted in 1998. Now, we're going to go through all the areas, but we're also going to tell you what the venues are used for, as well as some tips and tricks. But if you're only looking for a certain venue, uh, you can go ahead and skip to that chapter. I'll include those chapters in the timeline of the video, as well as the description box. But like I said, she debuted on her maiden voyage in 1998. She is 71,990 gross tons and 855 feet in length, 11 decks tall, and at max capacity she has 2,190 guests as well as 900 crew. Now, if you do like these cruise informational videos, cruise news, vlogs, and so much more, consider subscribing. Also, liking the video uh, helps me tremendously, and I really appreciate it, but let's get right into this ship tour. Now, starting off on Deck 7, or the Empress Deck, we have the Art Gallery, which is basically just a hallway that connects some of the staterooms to the main atrium, but it is a very nice area, displays a lots of different styles of art, lots of, you know, different artists, and there are typically art auctions held during your cruise that you can bid on some of these works. Coming out of the art gallery, you have the main atrium. This is basically the hub or the lobby of the ship. This is actually where you're going to be boarding the ship uh, on your very first day. So this is your first view. Uh, of course, you're gonna come in to the right over there past guest services. Speaking of guest services, that is right on the right. That is where if you have any issues, questions, concerns, that is the area you're going to go. You can also call them on your cabin and phone. Now also in the atrium of course there's the main bar where you can get a drink and there's going to be lots of different uh, shows here whether it's you know musicians whether it's a trio of violins a band uh, sometimes it's acoustic artists it's going to vary from you know cruise to cruise because the musicians of course are always changing out. You could also see a lot of the shows with the cruise director here like Rock the Promise as well as the final farewell party on the last evening. Also in this main atrium, you do have the excursions desk or the adventures desk. This is if you happen to have a question in regards to an excursion, or if you want to book an excursion, you can do it directly there. But we're moving up another really good shot of the atrium, and we are on the Atlantic deck, deck eight. Now on deck eight, you can find the fun shops, which are the tax-free, duty-free stores on board. A uh, great area if you're looking to take home some merchandise or souvenirs as well. A uh, variety of different shops. They include you know, jewelry, watches, cologne, uh, different types of smaller souvenirs like ship models, keychains, shot glasses. Uh, and so much more, just a, a great area to shop. These are only open on sea days as well as when you're traveling from port to port. Uh, if you're docked for the day, either at a home port or a destination, they are gonna be closed for those hours. Now moving on, you have the Mikado Lounge. I think I said that right. This is going to be the main theater on the Carnival Elation. It is pretty spacious. However, if there is a show that you really want to see and want to get good seats, I do uh, recommend that you get there just a little bit early, about 15 minutes before the show starts. Some of the best seats in the house are going to be, of course, front and center, but also we really enjoyed being kind of closer to the front on the second floor of the main theater. Some of the things that you'll see in the main theater are going to be shows like Love and Marriage, also Broadway style shows, uh, playlist productions, bingo is held here, as well as so much more.
Continuing near the atrium on deck eight, you have Circle C, which is going to be the place for young teenagers to meet, mingle, and just have some fun. This is for the 12 to 14 year olds. Again, just a kind of a private space for them uh, to play some games. There are some scheduled activities that go on here as well. Also on deck eight is Duke's Piano Bar, which is one of our favorite places to go at night. I love how the venue almost comes out <laughs> to the atrium. Uh, it incorporates kind of the entire atrium with it, but just a beautiful venue. Um, like I said, it's a great spot to listen to some music, have some fun, cut up with the musician, and usually they have a great personality, make you laugh, entertain you. Sometimes they uh, involve the guests as well whether it be, you know, interacting with jokes or actually inviting certain guests up to perform, whether it be on the piano or just singing, but just an, a great spot. It does fill up rather quickly, though, so again, you might want to get there early if you want seats. Next up on Deck 8, we have the Imagination Restaurant, which is going to be your time dining. And it's named the Imagination Restaurant because it's got a beautiful model ship of the Imagination right outside. Unfortunately, that ship has been scrapped at this point. But let me know in the comment section below if you've ever been on the Imagination. Uh, I went a couple of times when I was real young, but unfortunately don't remember much of it. Uh, but this is the restaurant for your time dining. Really beautiful, modern, and we had wonderful meals there. Also on deck eight, the aft of the ship, you have the Inspiration Restaurant. This is your early or late seating dinner. And unfortunately, I didn't find the ship model for this restaurant, but unfortunately that ship is gone too. Never got to sail on her, but again, let me know if you did in the comment section. Last but not least, on deck eight off the atrium, you have the Mark Twain Library. Now these are slowly becoming extinct on carnival ships. They've been um, switching them out a lot of times for the Heroes Tribute Bar and some other areas like arcades, but she still does have a library with books and games, a great area if you're trying to have, um, you know, a voice call or maybe doing some work. Also, you know, just a rainy day playing some games, picking up a book, just a really nice area. And also off the atrium, of course, we can't forget the liquor store. So again, tax-free, duty-free. So if you want to pick up some liquor on your way home, um, they will, of course, package it for you and then put it outside your cabin door on the last evening. Now moving up to deck nine, promenade deck, you have your Pixels photo gallery. Now it's early in the morning, so all of them are closed, but during the day they'll all be open with all different types of printout pictures from before the cruise, during the cruise, at your destination, so you can go through them, pick out the ones you want. Also on Promenade is my least favorite venue on the entire ship, and that is the Video Arcade. Luckily on this ship, it is super small, uh, so there's not too many games for kids to waste money on, but it is so expensive. So we do let Little Man go in there one day out of the cruise for about you know 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, he spends his little bit of money, and we are out of there. But again, it is small, so luckily we were only in there for a limited amount of time, uh, but very expensive area. Outside of the video arcade where you come across the main atrium again, which just loops around and it's just another beautiful view of the atrium. Uh, here is Club 02, which was closed at the time of recording, uh, but that is for the 15 to 17 year old. Same thing as Circle C, uh, just another uh, private area for teenagers to get together, have planned activities, meet and greets, all that good stuff. Next up is the Casablanca Casino and we did spend some time in there this past cruise. Uh, we actually enjoyed it, although we lost a decent amount of money. We could just not find a game that was willing to even work with us a little bit. So hopefully you guys have a better time than we did. Um, but one advice or one tip I would have is stay 
stay away from those fat little piggies. They would not pop for us. Um, I'm sure they would pop for other people, but uh, yeah, we they were stubborn for us. Anyway, they have a pretty big casino for this size ship. Lots of newer slot machines, tons of tables to play on, uh, but we basically stuck to the slots. The bar service also was really good in the casino, so if you're a drinker looking for drinks while you're playing, uh, we found runners all the time, so on some of the other ships, we always had issues getting drinks, but not on this one. And for those that are either smoking or non-smoking, uh, we don't smoke. Uh, they are allowed to smoke in the casino. However, it didn't really bother us at all. It wasn't super smoky, if that makes sense, because I know we get asked that question a ton. Fun. Um, so yeah, it was a really pleasant time. It would have been better if we had either broke even or won some money, but hey, maybe next cruise. Now, outside of the casino, you have the Banzai Sushi Express. Now, on some of the other ships, you actually have a whole restaurant for Banzai Sushi with like sit down uh, service. This is just express, it's very limited. So, you basically order, you pick it up, uh, and then you just find a spot to eat it. So, we didn't do that. We, like I said, we like to sit down and enjoy, you know, that specialty restaurant on other ships. They didn't have it here. Uh, from what we understood, People really enjoyed the taste, but again, they were looking for more of an intimate experience that a specialty restaurant offers. Next up is the Romeo and Juliet Lounge. Now, we love this little area. We've only went in it the one day for the uh, Diamond Brunch. It was amazing, such an intimate experience. But this is where they hold uh, karaoke as well. Unfortunately, the karaoke machine was down the week that we sailed, but that's okay. Um, but we really enjoyed this setting. Like I said, we had a couple of um, hors d'oeuvres in here, a few drinks, and it was just really really nice experience meeting all the officers and captain. Following the Romeo and Juliet lounge, you have not only the Java Blue Cafe, but also Cherry on Top. Uh, it's a very small Cherry on Top, but if you're looking for, you know, candy or, you know, have a sweet tooth, you can get some uh, different types of gummies, chocolates, things like that. Next up, you have the Limelight Lounge. Now, this venue is mostly used for the punchliner comedy, for the stand-up comedians uh, that rotate throughout the cruise, but they also actually hold uh, movies in this room as well, since the Elation doesn't have the seaside theater that some of the larger ships do. Um, they host the movies in here, so on different nights they had, for example, like the Super Mario Brothers movie um, and a few other new ones. The Teenage uh, Mutant Ninja Turtle animation movie that came out. Uh, they also hosted the Platinum Diamond uh, party here, and I, I'm not sure, honestly, which one hosts the dance club in the evening, whether it's Limelight or the Romeo and Juliet lounge. We weren't up that late to find out, but it is also in one of those rooms. If I were to guess, I would say the Romeo and Juliet lounge. Next up, we have one of our favorite venues on the entire ship, and that is the Alchemy Bar. If you've never had an Alchemy drink before, you are missing out. Uh, they do have alcoholic drinks, of course, but they also have non-alcoholic. So uh, if you're pregnant, don't like drinking, whatever the case is, they have a drink for you. Basically, uh, you can pick from different items on the menu, but they also will create your very own cocktail. Uh, they'll ask you what you like, what you don't like and they will make you a perfect drink. Now still on deck nine on the aft you have Serenity which is going to be the adults only area. Uh, sometimes they have a pool in this area but on the Elation they have two hot tubs as well as super comfortable loungers as well as some shade. A great spot to either talk to other adults uh, or grab a book maybe take a nap. A wonderful spot also of course you're on the aft of the ship so you get all the noises of the ship whether it be the propeller 
colors or just the weight. Now moving up to deck 10, you have the Lido deck. Now this is going to be the main pool on the Elation. Uh, of course, you have showers as well as two hot tubs. And this area is going to fill up very quickly. So if you want a place by the pool, uh, you're going to want to get a lounger pretty early. Just don't be the people that get them super early and then don't use them at all during the day. Don't be those people. <laughs> Otherwise, relax and enjoy. Now on either side of the pool you have the bars the red frog rum bar as well as the blue iguana tequila bar great drinks at both at blue iguana tequila they have the blues blue margarita that is fantastic if you're a margarita drinker and at red frog rum bar they have the cruiser uh such a delicious drink it basically tastes like an adult juice box could be very very sneaky though with the alcohol Continuing on the Lido deck, you have Guy's Burger, the famous burger venue on Carnival Cruise Lines. Absolutely fantastic. They have their own toppings bar, so you just load it up. You can also order it specifically the way you want it as well. On the opposite side of Guy's Burger, you have Blue Iguana Cantina. This is where you can get breakfast and lunch, breakfast burritos, lunch burritos, tacos, taco salad. Absolutely delicious. Moving in on the Lido deck, you have Tiffany's Marketplace. Now this is gonna be basically your buffet on board. Uh, there's also a bar located in the buffet uh, near the aft of the ship. Uh, but here you can have your frozen yogurt, your ice cream, deli, pizza. You have a salad bar that you can set up. Also, of course, your hot food stations that are gonna change daily. And then to top it off, you have your dessert station. Or if you wanna start with dessert, hey, go for it. It's your cruise. Now, outside of the Lido area, there's not really a name for this area. So we're just gonna call it the Lido Promenade, even though that doesn't really make sense. Or Lido Lanai, if you wanna call it that. Beautiful area though, to take some pictures, especially during sunset or sunrise. Uh, great area to walk. There's also these tables right here that are fantastic if you wanna eat or read. Uh, very quiet area. Moving up to deck 11, the veranda deck. Now this is right above the bridge at the front of the ship. Great area to take pictures, videos, all that good stuff. A uh, very quiet area too, there's not a lot of people. Up there you have the gym, we'll go up there in just a second. But this is one of my favorite places on the entire ship. Great spot, again, just to like clear your mind if you're having, you know, stress at home or work or whatever the case is, you can really do some good clearing your mind at the front of the ship. Now continuing on the veranda deck, this is near the main pool again. There are some ping pong tables on either side here. And this to the right is actually going to be the smoking area on board the Carnival Elation. Uh, so if you are a smoker, that's exactly where it is. Now continuing to the aft of the ship, you have Carnival Waterworks, which is a lovely area, again, to spend the day. Lots of different water slides. We couldn't get Rhett on the bigger yellow one, unfortunately, even though he was tall enough, but he absolutely loved, you know, the like splash area. They have the really small, like, toddler slides, and then they also have these really cool racing slides that you'll see uh, in another angle in just a sec. Moving up to the aft sports deck, this is actually where you're going to be getting on the water slides, but also where the funnel is located, one of our favorite uh, areas of the ship. Just, of course, by the name of the channel, it would make sense, right, that that would be our favorite spot. Um, but just some beautiful views up here. Anytime we had some downtime, we'd walk up here and just kind of take in the ship and all the noises that are going around the ship, especially late at night. It's lit up uh, with almost these like Christmas lights, just absolutely beautiful. Here's another shot of the Carnival Waterworks area, and those are the two slides that he was obsessed with. He must have went on them like a hundred times in one day, and me and him were racing. 
Now this is sports deck forward and we're gonna go through this door right here and that is going to lead you back near the atrium but all the way on the 12th deck and off the atrium you have Camp Ocean, uh, not only for the turtles and the penguins but also on the opposite side uh, you have the sharks and stingrays. All the way to the front of the ship, you have Cloud Nine Spa, as well as your fitness area, uh, which unfortunately I did not use at all, uh, but Michelle hooked us up with some video on that. And this is the salon that's on board as well, if you're looking to get nails done or hair did or anything like that. They also have a sauna on board that is in Cloud9 Spa if you're looking to treat those pores. It's so relaxing in there. This is the fitness area. Michelle did say it was quite small, but they had everything that one would need if they're looking to work out during the week. Uh, she said it wasn't very busy at all. Typically on the first sea day, it is slam packed, uh, but she didn't run into that. She usually went around 7, 7.30 in the morning, did a quick workout, and then just got on with the day. Now the gym is free to use, but they do have cycling classes, which I believe they do cost a little bit extra and you have to sign up for, but uh, they have them if you're looking into that. Now moving up to deck 14, you have the grand deck, which has the shuffleboard as well as some mini golf, which we did play, it was lots of fun. I would just try to play it on a day where the ship is docked because it can get quite windy up there. Um, and if you did notice, we skipped over deck 13. That's because uh, Carnival does not use a deck 13. I'm pretty sure that is kind of across the board on cruise lines, but I know for certain Carnival always skips deck 13, but if you're on deck 14 you know what deck you're really on right <laughs> but yeah we played mini golf Rhett ended up getting a hole in one on one of these courses right here and like I said it was lots of fun it is free you just grab your putter they have different uh, putters of different lengths and your color ball and get to it And last but not least, you have deck 15, which is going to be the sun deck. Now there's not a ton up here. However, this is the absolute best spot uh, besides maybe near the funnel to be when you go under the bridge in Jacksonville, which I'll just show you in a second. We got some great footage. Uh, it typically happens right as the sail away party is going on. So, uh, you know, you don't want to miss out on the sail away party, but try to break off a little bit before the end of the sail away party. So that way you can experience going under the bridge. And it is just amazing. We've been under some really awesome bridges before. Um, and this one is no different. And as we float down the glass elevator from the top deck to the lobby, uh, that is going to wrap up this ship tour for the Carnival Elation. Now, if you do have any questions whatsoever in regards to the Carnival Elation, cruises, or Carnival in general, just put them in the comment section. I'll be glad to answer them as soon as they come in. Um, and we're going to be having some tips and trick videos, everything that's included uh, on the Carnival Elation. Lots of Carnival Elation content coming. Uh, so thank you guys so much for your continued support. Do me a favor hit like on the way out hopefully we'll see you right back here in the next video or on a cruise ship one day catch you later i woke up with the sun today rolled out of bed and said i'm gonna have some fun today and that's just what i did the birds were singing come outside i felt giddy like a kid if life is like a swimming pool you know i'm jumping in we got the perfect summer day so put me in your plans You know that this doesn't happen every day So everybody clap your hands Cause when we raise on high Every hand in the sky We're the super fans Feeling grand in the clear stands Shout it out, make some noise, make it loud Choking up the lovely weather Everything just comes together I woke up feeling 
my journey has begun. I gotta give a shout out to the green grass and the sun. It's a long way off, a tricky shot, but I know it can be done. Another day, another game, another hole in one. Yeah, we got the perfect summer day. So put me in your plans. You know that this doesn't happen every day. So everybody clap your hands. Cause when we raise the high, every hand in the sky, we're the super fans. Feeling grand in the grandstands. Shout it out, make some noise, make it loud. Soaking up the lovely weather, everything just comes together. Lift them up, all the hands, all in one. We're the super fans. Feeling grand in the grandstands. And keep them there, all the hands in the air. We're wishing it could last forever. Wish I could bottle time Cause if you only pause You'll hear the crowd applaud They're cheering for you now Stand up and take a bow You know that you deserve it Today is picture perfect Raise on high Every hand in the sky We're the super fans Feeling grand in the clear stands Shout it out Make some noise Make it loud Soaking up the lovely weather